So I'm gonna try to finish off my thoughts that I was saying earlier. Um, so, but um, the point I was trying to get at when I was speaking about all that shit um, in my last video was simply to say that I wanna add, I guess, almost like programming. Because when you do witchcraft and you do magic, and I've already stated this, but when you when you are a magician, when you are a witch, um, that comes along with the programming well, not necessarily that it comes with the programming, but, you know, like I said, as a child, I knew my grandmother was a witch from the story that told us. So, basically, on some level, that is programming in my mind that being a witch, having these powers, is possible because someone in my family knows it. Everybody in my family know, knew it. It's in the same way as I said um, that if you, you can call on your ancestors for money problems, for relationship problems, but you can also call on Venus and stuff and use them as well. But Venus and the planets are more for self work because these are energies within your body. So they affect your body. But you're trying to bring stuff into your into your reality while well, using your body as well. So that you can still use it as well. But the reason you can use ancestors, just like you can use deities, using a specific deity that might be tied to Venus also works if it's not completely her as well. And the reason these things work just like your ancestors is... Say I call on my I, I was to call on my grandmother, um, Mir Muriel, um, LeBlanc. Um, I'm calling on her, her energy. Uh, she she lived at one time, and maybe I'm calling on her to help me, to guide me with my magic, to learn, uh, to go through initiation, to become a witch, to know what she knew. Okay, well I'm calling on the consciousness that used to be my grandmother. Is she somewhere elsewhere? Probably. Am I contacting her where she is right now at the present time? No, I'm contacting what you what was my grandmother when she was alive on this earth. Her consciousness, all her the things that she touched, where she went, her energies are still here. But anyways, the point of this is though, within my mind and every family member, uh, my cousins, my mom, which you know is related to her through law, like my father uh, is her son. So my father's blood ties to her, but. Both their minds have my grandmother in there. They have memories that they can see in their mind. They might even have dreams from time to time. So there's a thought form of my grandmother still alive within everybody's head. Kind of like, I don't know if you watch it, I think it's the um, the Book of Life and the Book of the Dead. There's two cartoons and same concept. If everybody up there who dies, uh, everybody who remembers you dies, well then, they have to go to the deepest part of the underworld where the forgotten ones go. Whereas if you're remembered by your the, your family, your the people that exist that live, if you remember, and, and these are real, these are come from real traditions. Uh, by the way, they're not always exactly the way they portray it in movies, but a lot of the concepts are are real. By the way, and I'm not going to get into all that, but that would be a pretty cool uh, video to make too on some of these religion slash spirituality slash crafts witchcrafts but anyways when everybody up in the land of the living doesn't have you in their memories anymore they're not going and celebrating your death you're passing on then once you get forgotten you go into the deepest part of hell and then you basically whisk away you just blow away in the wind like sand because if you're not in the physical anymore and you're not in the mental anybody's thoughts anymore, which is where things start. So you can still be alive as a thought, kind of like when someone dies on the table, their mind dies, but if their their body dies, but if their mind is still alive, or maybe it's the people around them still hoping they can come back, and maybe if those people are powerful enough or wish enough, then who knows? That's, that's something I don't think we could ever prove anyways. But the point is, it's kind of like that with your ancestors is whether you want to call it a form, an entity, a deity, whatever, you can call on what was them, what is them, the thought form that exists in everybody's mind, even though it's in the past, like, there's nothing stopping me from going in my imagination right now and having a conversation with my grandmother, okay? Knowing all the information I know about her now, okay? About her back then, I can go into the place where she used to live, the last place I went to where she lived, and I can have a conversation with her, me being today's Corey, and her being the last version of her that I saw before she passed away. And everybody's mind, who knows my grandmother, that I'm also linked to, especially in a dream, would help 
create the picture of my grandmother and I can get real life answers. Now those answers coming from her actual entity, her spirit, her body, that thought form or servitor, whatever you want to call it, or is it coming from my own mind? It doesn't matter. The answers would be no less unreal and I would still get the answers I need and I have something real I can call on. I have an ancestor I can call on and it would work within my mind because if it's the criteria because she was a witch she had these powers and she actually used them so I could ask her questions and I would get the real answers and it would be coming from my mind and it doesn't really matter whether it's actually from her then her now or her spirit or whatever because the answers would be correct because all our minds are linked so I, my mind would get the download or the information from her mind and then I'd get it this is a way we can download and get information instantaneously. You can do this in a visualization in your living room once you practice and you get those connections worked out. Now I'm gonna be talking about something a little bit that's a little more scarier that might be happening soon, but we'll cross that bridge when I cross that bridge. But that's how ancestor works, that's how deity works, that's how all this stuff. So when I was talking about um, taking on deities as in installing new apps and we're like the computer, which I'm gonna stop talking like that because <clears throat> we are way more beautiful, wonderful, um, exquisite, fucking complex and more powerful than a computer ever is. But it's it's a nice simile comparison slash metaphor um, if you use the word is or such as or like then it's not a metaphor, it's a simile or a comparison. But anyway, so that's just some grammar for you. <laughs> Because I have a grimoire and I am good at spelling because I cast those motherfuckers. Anyways, you ever notice how the song, I don't know if you ever heard the song fucking uh, Taylor Swift and the dude from Panic of the Disco, but in the middle of the song, hey kids, spelling is fun. Well, they blank that bitch out. They blank out the, all you hear is, well actually they do the hey kids as well too, so it's not so obvious, so maybe you think it's just some cut. But when they first started airing on the radio, they would say, hey kids, and then the rest would be blanked out. It's like, why the fuck are they blanking out spelling is fun? You know what I mean? That's fucked up. Isn't it because of the whole words or spells and cursive with curses and shit like that? Who knows? But anyways, so calling on your ancestors is like calling on planet energies, calling on deities. What you're asking to happen is you're, you're taking your subconscious mind and you're creating a symbolic link to speak to your subconscious mind. Once again, that's all it is. And you can look at it from the thought form perspective like I like to use all the time because it really helps me understand it all. But there's a form of thought in everybody's mind that is my grandmother and that is still alive within everybody's mind. Just like I said, once we all die who remember my grandmother and there's no one else here that remembers her or has a picture up of her or anything like that, is that when that person is truly gone? Who knows? I think they're gone when they're gone and they move on to the next task, whether that's reincarnation, whether that's going up, whether that's helping, who knows? But what I truly think is as long as you can have a symbolic representation to talk to your uh, subconscious, um, then it's going to work and you're going to get the information you need. And so, uh, how did I get onto that shit? Oh, yeah. Okay. And this is how you protect, this is also the same way you protect against thought forms that could be coming after you. The coronavirus as a thought form, just like any disease as a thought form, is a real thing people should know about and potentially be aware of. And it comes back to the reason why I want to add these very small but um, life changing and helping and like magic hacks basically because people don't know about it right if you're just in the law of attraction spiritual and meditating that's great but you might not know the specific words to talk into exi existence and you, you might eventually evolve and work anyways because you've been watching the same thing over and over again you watch people saying that they've been uh using the law of attraction to manifest and if you think their version of the law of attraction is the same as your version and you've been doing it for a few years now well then it, it'll work but you want to speed up the process. Well, depolarization is probably one of the best things you can do added. Well, meditation is probably the single most. And then depolarization, then accept, banish, reject, deny, all that shit is all, like all, uber important. Ritual magic, getting to know your mind, practicing visualization, um, creating your space holy, removing uh, negativity and any harmful energies off of things. You know, all this stuff is helpful, but not. Uh, it's definitely, 
I can't say it's not necessary because there's always ways of doing things. There's always a bunch of ways of doing things, but unless you know those ways and if you just have vague information, well then it's not going to help you much. So the reason why I'm breaking thought forms down so much is like I said, it's, I want people to be protected against coronavirus and I think that's just the best way because I think there's something way more deep into coronavirus. I was looking into the neocortex because um, um, because last time I was listening to uh, Ralph Smart, he was talking about the Matrix, and um, he said, uh, "Neo, wake up! Neo, wake up! Neo, wake up!" And I couldn't help. I kept getting the picture of a brain in my head, and the neocortex, neocortex. I'm like, is this some kind of fucking? metaphor for our neocortex and how our neo this is before I, I I couldn't remember exactly what part of the brain the neocortex was I know now but um I couldn't remember so I'm like is this a play on that neo wake up morpheus you know computer simulation we're all in mind blah 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 so it made me look down the path of the neocortex <coughs> and the information I got was scary and you know I was looking into David Icke stuff and then he said something pretty bluntly that I was basically slowly coming to. So then I knew exactly that what was going on. And just a side shift on David Icke for a second here. Um, he got apparently banned from YouTube, woke up and locked out all his accounts so they don't exist and whatever. But as far as I can tell, a lot of his information is still on there and you can still see the very harsh information. So um, I always take both sides to every story. So I don't take any sides basically because I'm in the middle. Uh, David Icke is very good at polarizing people against reptilians. I don't always think that's good because we have one part of our brain. The oldest, oldest part of our brain is called the reptilian mind. It's the brain stem, basically. The first part of the brain that's been with us forever. And it's in charge of survival. Most people think the reptilian brain is the problem. It's the problem. It's what gets you into uh, fight or flight. And technically, it used to save you. And this is this was my understanding up until about, about three hours ago. Um, too, but I went to various sources and two books to make sure what I was what I'm going to tell you is accurate. But um, but most people think the reptilian mind is bad, and like I said, likewise we you know spirituality. It's not uh, for us who don't believe in necessarily heaven and hell and the God of the Bible and Satan and Lucifer in that sense, um, which the totally egregores and thought forms. By the way, you probably knew I was going to say that, but um, they. Um, now it's reptilians versus other Palladians or the other aliens or source or whatever the case, but they're the bad guys. Just like in our mind, they're the bad guys, okay? Um, but they're not, not at least when it comes to our brain. Now, if there's an alien race out there that's done all the things that the internet says the reptilians have done, then, you know, then it's arguably they are bad. But if they're the reason we're evolving to conquer them, then, you know, they're not really not that bad in my book. But the reptilian mind is in charge of everything in your body. It's in charge of all the, you know, the, the healing, the not healing, the fucking, um, the regulation of your temperature. You know what I mean? That's something that's on every being in, that has a brain, basically, okay? Now, the neocortex is the newest part of the brain, which is something I find fascinating. Um, and it ultimately controls most of our hearing sight touch vision uh, or that sight um and all that shit those five senses that people say are bad or not good or whatever the case may be uh, let me stop this there.